Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about Mars, but specifically about what made Mars lose its magnetosphere and turn it into such an unusually dead looking planet. We're going to talk about how magnetosphere works and if there is a way for us to actually one day restart the magnetosphere on Mars as well. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And to make this video a little bit more clear, what I'm going to have to show you are a few um, pictures and a few visuals of what is inside of Mars and what's inside of Earth and what we today think uh, drives the magnetosphere and what makes it essentially so active on Earth and inactive on Mars. Now, this is actually based on a re relatively uh, new study that tries to investigate the potential mechanisms for how to stop magnetosphere. And to try to understand uh, how Martian magnetosphere may have stopped, we also need to understand how magnetosphere works back on Earth. And specifically, we actually have to go inside the structure of Earth and um, use modern theories to try to understand what drives the magnetosphere um, on our own planet. So if we were to zoom in back to Earth and take a look at the internal structure of our own planet, we would find that underneath the crust layer, and underneath all the water and stuff, you would find uh, several types of very common minerals that are abundant in our solar system. One of the major ones right on top, um, right underneath the crust, is what's known as olivine. And a lot of the visuals uh, of minerals and the structure of Earth is actually coming from this website right here by Takaaki Kawazoe, uh, from Japan, who has these really, really interesting studies and also really good visuals on what's inside our planet Earth. Uh, now, first, there's this layer that you see inside. Let me actually zoom into it. Here we go. So there's this layer called olivine, and this is right underneath the crust and the water. So basically, this is the, um, the cutout of our planet Earth. Uh, from about zero kilometers to about 400, there's this mineral called olivine, which you can find uh, on Wikipedia just to see what it looks like. It contains magnesium, um, iron, and, uh, and silicon oxides. And basically, this is what makes up most of the um, man upper mantle over planet Earth and also of Mars as well. And now, this uh, particular mineral is uh, relatively dry. It doesn't really store water very well. But it does actually convert to other minerals if you give it some pressure and some temperature. And specifically here, at a depth of about 410 to about 660 kilometers, it changes into these two other minerals about which I've talked previously, um, uh, Wadsleyite and Ringwoodite. Um, and these two actually store a lot of water. As a matter of fact, one of, the reason, uh, why, one of the reasons they're blue is because of the water stored in it. But in terms of structure, though, it's relatively similar to olivine. Um, iron is missing, but that's another story. Now, this particular mineral is um it's definitely present on earth but we're not sure if it's present on mars because we never really got to drill deep into the martian ground or we never really got to find any um meteorites from mars that would actually indicate if this was present there and then right after these two minerals uh, at a depth of about 660 kilometers as the pressure increases all of this stuff changes into um, this other, well, these two minerals, but really it's this one here called uh, Brigmanite, which basically is once again dry and doesn't store any water and is, is serving as a kind of a border between the core where all of the iron is and the um, upper mantle where all of the water is. So this layer here is essentially like a shield, a shield protecting the area where there is a lot of iron circulating from the area where there is actually um, water underneath the surface. Obviously, if this water um, got closer to the iron, there would certainly be certain uh, chemical reactions which might potentially stop the iron uh, from circulating. And this is actually where it gets a little bit interesting. So it turns out, and this is from a new study uh, about Mars, that it's very likely that the water that Mars used to have underneath here was actually getting closer and closer to the actual iron. So in other words, the uh, this layer here, Brigmanite layer, uh, kind of started to disappear and eventually only the Ringwoodite uh, remained, followed by the actual iron level. In other words, 
is this whole area where there's a lot of circulation of iron which we think creates the magnetosphere um basically started approaching the area where there, there was a water layer now the way that the actual generation of the magnetosphere works is through what's known as convection and this is the modern theory that explains it where basically we think that the denser material on top falls to the bottom of the planet and the lighter material or the less dense material goes to the top and uh, here it might change composition again become more dense and fall to the bottom again and this kind of creates this circular motion inside the core of our not the core inside the um mantle of our planet where we think iron might be circulating and creating the magnetosphere due to the circular motion uh, that is generated by the convection and for as long as this layer is here um, it allows for this circulation to basically continuously occur over periods of billions of years basically a lot of this material becomes more dense uh, sinks to the bottom of the planet and some of it comes to the top and um, the process is repeated again but we think that maybe just maybe because mars started cooling down and because the pressure started to decrease just a little bit uh, eventually, with time, the ringwoodite started touching the iron core. And all of the water inside this material, uh, or I guess this mineral, started to escape and react with various things in this area. And specifically, a lot of the oxygen probably escaped and joined some other minerals, but hydrogen stayed as a kind of a layer in between these, uh, joining some of the other minerals and creating um, a very light very not dense material as a matter of fact it probably created a new type of a shield that essentially prevented further minerals from getting dense and falling to the bottom of mars in other words um, a layer of hydrogen compounds formed right here and it actually stopped the convection from happening and this happened relatively quickly within about 100 million years essentially suffocating mars uh, or stopping the magnetosphere from uh, being generated because suddenly there was no more convection inside the material here would never get dense enough to fall to the bottom and the material that stayed there uh would come up to the top and just stop here and the convention convection would stop completely in other words no circulation no magnetosphere generated as soon as that happened uh it's very likely that the uh, martian surface started to transform quite dramatically really really quickly now, because there was no more convection on the inside of the magnetosphere basically just stopped existing, uh, the water would suddenly start disappearing, the atmosphere would follow pretty quickly, and within a few hundred million years, Mars would actually turn into this. Now, this is uh, still not the most prominent explanation for how the magnetosphere on Mars disappeared. Um, the other theory involves a collision that Mars may have received, specifically... A collision that probably occurred a few billion years ago and may have warmed up the outer surface of Mars and basically um, then stopped the convection from happening because suddenly the heated surface would actually not uh, sink anymore. It would actually stay on the surface and thus the convection would stop and the magnetosphere would stop as well. Now both of these theories are still kind of not widely supported and they only give a relatively rough explanation for why there is no more magnetosphere on mars but if the geological explanation that i have just given you is correct this means two things one is that it's very possible that one day uh this layer will also disappear on earth this layer will actually start touching the um, iron layer on our planet earth and our magnetosphere will get extinguished as well and this will transform the planet earth quite dramatically now, this is obviously not really good news for um, us trying to re-enable the magnetosphere on the planet because we were hoping that maybe there would be a way for us to restart the magnetosphere somehow um, by either using, I don't know, like nuclear detonation or a collision with the planet. But it turns out that it's not as simple, especially if we're talking about an entire layer of hydrogen materials right there underneath the surface, which we could not even reach possibly. So unless we would produce a very large magnet on the surface of a planet or possibly going along the equator of the planet, there might be no way for us to restart the magnetosphere on Mars, which also means that if we ever colonize Mars, we'll be pretty much stuck living inside caverns or um, highly shielded colonies, just like in, uh, in Surviving Mars, the game that I've been playing recently. 
Well, that's all we know about how Mars may have lost its magnetosphere for now. And in some of the future videos, we might try to find ways to re-enable uh, Martian magnetosphere, or at least try to find ways to uh, start it again using conventional and not so conventional means. Anyway, I hope you learned something about uh, Mars in this video, and thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching videos or learning through video games. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.